What's going on guys? Welcome to today's video. On the previous video, we went ahead and took the FRS out on his first drive. In case you guys didn't know, we recently boosted the FRS, so we got a full turbo kit and everything for the car. It's gonna be on E85, basically all of the goodies on this car that you can do without changing the stock internals but we ran into some issues. We're having a random misfire in the high RPMs and the car has been turning off whenever I let off the, the throttle. So we went ahead and took out the intake manifold, which is over there, to remove the direct injectors and I just dropped them off yesterday to get them cleaned out. So it's gonna be about two days until we can get them back and put back in the car. But don't worry guys, we're gonna keep pushing forward and we're gonna do some installs today. So during the drive, one of the things that pissed me off the most was that I couldn't read my AFR, my boost, my oil pressure, and all of that. I had to look on my phone and I don't wanna look at all of the parameters on my phone when I'm driving. So your boy went ahead and picked up some gauges. Let me go ahead and show you guys. We picked up three gauges by AEM. I think we have a boost gauge. We have an oil pressure gauge, and we have an AFR gauge right hither, right there. And as well as a gauge pod for the FRS. So today that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and slap this on the car. So then the interior will look a lot more race car-y than it does right now. Currently, it's just clean. We got some painted interior trims. We got some racing seats. So the gauge pod is gonna sit right on the A-pillar. Let me show you guys. Right here, so it's easily visible when I drive the car. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna slap on some gauges, baby. Oh, and also, to make the install a lot cleaner, let me show you guys what you are gonna need to buy from Amazon or wherever. Okay, so we got a bag of goodies from Amazon. This isn't necessary, I just want everything to look clean. We got assorted heat shrink, so we don't have exposed wiring. We have, oh, right here. We have a add a fuse so that we don't have to tap into the battery. This will just go into the fuse box. And on top of that, this will help the, the wires look a lot cleaner. They're basically wire sleeves. So you just put your wires through this and it gives it like a nice little finish. You guys will see later when I use it. But yeah, all, all of this was like 20, 30 bucks on Amazon. So definitely worth the money because you get to have a lot cleaner of an install with these. Okay, let's go ahead and open everything and lay it out so the install is easier. Oh, we got a little sticker. This is, what gauge is this? Yeah, oil pressure. Oh, we have some butt connectors here as well. We got the oil pressure sensor. Okay, some, some hose, some lines, and some wiring. Oh, never mind. This is the boost gauge. And here's the gauge itself. So this is everything that goes with the boost gauge. We'll keep it all together. Next gauge. This is the air fuel ratio gauge. This is a lot more components than I thought. And an O2 sensor. Oh, you can switch it out for a white face too if you wanted. Okay, last but not least, I'm guessing this is the oil pressure sensor. Yeah. Oil pressure. There we go. Now we have one last thing to open up, which is the gauge pod. This is the only brand that offers a three gauge gauge pod for the FRS, which is crazy, because I thought it'll be more common. But this is by Glowshift. Okay, here it is. Nothing special, it's just plastic. It's pretty thin plastic too. It's kind of cheap quality, but this is the only one I can find. This was 60 bucks. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and slap the gauges in here to see how it looks. And let's see, I think, which one is bottom? Yeah, it should go like this. Let's do oil pressure, boost, AFR, because I think I'm gonna look at the AFR a lot more. Or, now I'm gonna put AFR right here and boost right here. Make sure it's lined up properly. All right, we got all the gauges lined up. Now to lock it in, you just take 
this angle bracket thing that they give you and you just put it into the studs on the back side that way it has like a little bracket to mount to like that and then we put screws on the back end we put on all of the nuts so we're good to go i'm trying to decide if i should plug in all the wires into the gauges first so that way when we put it in we can go ahead and just route the wires instead of trying to plug them in one by one hmm yeah fuck it let's do that we're gonna plug in all of the sensors into the gauges we got all the wires plugged in let's go slap this in the car Old pillar out. Probably shouldn't have done that. This is gonna be so much wires to shove down here. Okay, quick little update. I knew I should have thrown my OEM pillar because this is supposed to go over the OEM one and so it's not a complete replacement so what you do is you put this on top and I went ahead and ran the wire through over here and down there and that's gonna be covered with the trim piece now it's sagging a little bit so we're gonna have to find a way to hard mount this to the car so it stays like that but then I went ahead and ran all the wires down here these wires are gonna be mounted onto the fuse box in here so it can get some power. And the rest, all the sensor wires, I ran to the engine bay through this rubber grommet over there. So we have the boost and the oil pressure sensors right here. And then we have the air fuel ratio. This thing was so hard to get through. That rubber grommet, you guys have no idea, but shout out to my girlfriend. We managed to do it with two people, so now we're solid. Before I go ahead and hook this up and run it to the right places in the motor, we're gonna wire up the gauges just to make sure it has power, and Kirby's gonna help me, right Kirby? So I'm gonna show you guys how to wire these properly so that they turn on whenever you turn the ignition on, and you don't have a constant power draw to the battery that could literally kill your battery, which I learned the hard way. I've wired so many stuff incorrectly to where it just draws power from the battery and then I've had to replace it like every year. So y'all don't wanna do that. Let's go ahead and do this properly. I took all of the black wires coming from all three gauges and put them in one strand and then I connected a ring terminal on there, heat shrank it on and crimped it on and this should be good. I'm gonna go ahead and ground this on the side of the chassis somewhere. And then I'm pretty much gonna do the same thing with all the red fuses, but instead of using the ring terminal, I'm gonna use these Ada fuse, and I'm gonna connect two to one, and then since we have one extra one, I'll connect one extra red wire to another one on its own. And then we're gonna plug them into a fuse box under there, and preferably we're gonna pick a fuse that only turns on when you turn the car on, so we don't have a constant power draw. So let me go ahead and do just that. And then I'll go ahead and show you guys what it looks like. fuses are now added check this out I got the fuses all figured out and plugged in now I'm gonna plug this into the fuse box the two fuses I'm using is the cigarette lighter and the radio so I'm hoping that those are good because whenever you turn the key that's the first thing that goes on okay I got the fuses all plugged in now I don't think we're gonna have to use these bl blue and white wires but I'm gonna leave it there just in case um, if I turn on the car and the gauges work without them, then I'll go ahead and cut them. But for now, we'll leave them. It's time to finally put in the sensors. Now, the sensors are probably the easiest part. For example, the boost sensor, all we have to do is plug the sensor, which is right here, into the wire. And then we're going to run a vacuum line to wherever you like. I think I'm going to go ahead and use this as a connection. I'll cut this hose right here, insert this three-way connector and then plug one of the ports into the sensor and the other port back into the other point of the hose that I cut. Okay. 
plug it up with our new hose. And then the other point, straight into the sensor. Okay, next up we're gonna go ahead and hook up our AFR sensor. Now, I got lucky with this situation because since I boosted the car, this downpipe actually came with two oxygen sensor ports since the FRS has two O2 sensors. Uh, one right there and the other one which I already removed right there. Now, the reason why I have that O2 sensor pretty much freed up is because I'm running this flex fuel kit and it plugs right into that O2 sensor harness. So that pretty much deletes that sensor. So I'll just take the new O2 sensor that AM gives me, plug it into the open port, and then we can just plug this into the harness. Okay, there we go. AFR sensor is now plugged into the harness. I ran it all across the engine bay and connected it through here. So now the sensor is just chilling here. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and plug in our oil pressure sensor. And so for that one, there's two locations I know on this car to uh, feed your oil line through. And one of them is right here under the oil filter. And the other one is right under these coolant lines right there. I'm not sure if you guys can see it, but here's a better view of it. That plug right there you can take that off and run an oil line. I'm gonna go ahead and run the oil feed line that way and put the oil pressure sensor right there since the oil pressure sensor is pretty fat. So it's not gonna fit over there. So that's why we're gonna do the little swap and we should be good. Holy fuck, this is hella on there. Oh my God. fucking broke what the fuck look at that it broke off this allen key thingamabobber oh my god how am i supposed to get this off now what how's it on so tight i swear nothing ever wants to go right so it looks like for now we won't be able to run the oil pressure sensor because there's no other ports i can think of now the only thing i could do now is buy like a three-way port for this hole right here and then run the oil feed line, the pressure sensor, and the OEM pressure sensor onto one port because there's nowhere else to run it on this car. But let's go ahead and put this motor back together. I got the injectors back from cleaning. Now, if you guys didn't know, I went ahead and got my injectors fully cleaned and rebuilt. Here they are. They were super dirty before, but now they're super clean and rebuilt. But unfortunately, I found out that one of my injectors was bad, so I had to buy a brand new one from Toyota in this box. And this was literally $350 for one injector. This is crazy. So hopefully this does the trick and gets the car running real nice. The person who cleaned my injectors did say that the one that needed replacing was leaking super bad. So there's nothing left to do besides replace it because you can't rebuild a leaking injectors. But yeah, we pretty much got everything we needed to put the motor back today. And I went ahead and got an upgraded hose. This is a quarter inch line instead of an eighth inch vacuum line. And I'm gonna slap this in and see if that helps with the idling issue. Cause before, whenever I let off the gas, when the car's warm, the car was shut off. And so I'm thinking this line isn't thick enough because Tile recommends a quarter line and this is an eighth line. So we're gonna slap this in today and see how it does. Just like that, we got everything back together. Intake is on, new injector is on. Now we can go ahead and see if the gauges we wired up works and if we can go ahead and trim up the extra wires down here that we didn't use. And of course the oil pressure gauge isn't gonna work because we're gonna need to buy the three port adapter, but everything else should work. So let's find out. Oh, look at that. She's on baby. Oil pressure. Air fuel ratio, boost, we got everything lit up. So now we know we can go ahead and trim off these wires because we don't need them. 
wires are all cut, trim pieces back on, went ahead and secured the gauges. This is not going anywhere. We went ahead and turned on the car and there's no signs of any fuel leakage or fuel spraying out anywhere. So let's go ahead and give this thing a startup and see if she runs. quite rich 15 or 16 oh there we go 14 that's better and negative 18 vacuum that's perfect these two are actually perfect good thing we're data logging it I'm gonna let this thing warm up for a bit more and then we'll see where we can go okay I'm noticing a slight problem the blow-off valve is slightly open at idle I don't know if you guys can see that but there's like a small gabbage right there That might be why my car is dying when I let off the gas. I'm gonna have Cheryl flip the gas just a tiny little bit. Don't go crazy. And see if the blow-up valve closes when she does that. Okay. You're good. Thank you, babe. You turn off the car now. Okay, blow off valve does close when you blip the throttle a little bit, so I think that should be okay. We'll find out when we drive this thing tomorrow morning because it's kind of laid out right now and I don't want to be driving this loud ass car at this time. So I'll catch you guys tomorrow morning where we'll do some driving with this thing and hopefully I don't break down again. It is now the next day. I don't know what got into me, but I woke up and I told myself I have to get this oil pressure sensor working. And as you all saw from yesterday, the oil port the plug literally would not come off and i snapped my allen bolt from it i snapped my allen key from it i already went ahead and tapped it with the screwdriver a few times with a hammer and i got it loose so we're gonna extract it with using this magnet right here and then we'll give it round two of taking it off hey we fucking did it we did it look at that oh my god it came out okay now that we got this piece off, let's try to take it off one more time. Oh, did it work? Oh my God, we did it. We did it. Y'all, I thought that shit was about to snap. Look at that. This is what we were trying to get off. This little plug right here. All right, oil line is on and relocated. Now we freed up this port right here. So now we can go ahead and install our oil pressure sensor. Now, this is my first time installing any AEM sensors or gauges or anything like that. And I did my research and apparently AEM sensors really like to die when there's a lot of heat around them. So I bought this little relocator kit. What this does is you plug it into whatever port you desire, which is gonna be right there. And then it allows an extension line and then you can plug the pressure sensor into the other end and you can basically route this wherever because when you plug it directly into the motor it gets super hot which usually fries the sensor and these sensors are not cheap so your boy wanted to take extra precautions so let's go ahead and get this unwrapped and installed now we officially got all three sensors and harnesses all wired up and good to go all right let's go ahead and turn on the car and see if our oil pressure gauge works properly Come on. There we go. Why did it take forever? It literally took forever. <laughs> okay, now the air fuel ratio is being spoofy. What the hell? It's just staying at 14.7. Looks like the boost is good. Oil pressure is going bananas. I don't know why that is. Let's see if we have any leak. no leaks either I wonder why that is uh 
Okay. Is this right? Should it be at 100 right now? I know this shouldn't be at 14.7. That's wrong. Look, even if I blip the gas a little, that doesn't change. So we gotta figure out what the issue is with the air fuel ratio sensor. I think it could be bad because I've read online so much that AEM sensors are freaking dog. They're terrible, so we might have to run to the auto parts store and buy like a Bosch or something, step up the quality, and hopefully it'll work then. But the numbers on here are jumping, so I think we should be good right there. I'm gonna go ahead and search up what our oil pressure should be and see if those are the proper numbers. I don't think I could take this out for a drive. I just literally stepped on the gas pedal once and it wanted to die already, so. Look, it just drops and then it just dies. So I don't wanna be standing on the road. We'll give another shot. If anything, I might go ahead and replace the blow-off valve because this one stays open and my tuner insists that I have to find one that is closed during idle. We already went ahead and addressed all the problems that we knew about, so the only thing left to do is replace this blow-off valve, so I'll go ahead and order another one. But in case it was just a spoof, we'll start it up again. See, idle's fine, right? The moment I step on it, it dies. It starts to idle terribly. See? It just drops back down. Step on it again. Dies. And look, the AFR is just going crazy. It's okay. We'll figure you out. Don't worry.